What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex. And in this video, I want to talk about another quote from the director of Stellar Blade. He's been saying a lot of good stuff, okay? You go back historically, you know, over the past really couple months, and I just like what I hear from this guy. And look, this is not um, like a severe bias, right? Because I am into Stellar Blade. Like, I believe it's going to be a good game. This doesn't make me, I guess, believe it more. I think it makes me respect him a little bit more. And ultimately, look, the game is still going to have to win me over, right? If the game is terrible and there's only a few things that are good, well, you know, of course, I'm going to say that out loud when it comes. But I want to talk about another uh, comment he had about basically, I guess, games that have an ending. And he has talked about that before. But this time he mentions like profit, right? Profit margins. And I don't know. Again, there's just a respect I kind of have for hearing this. So I want to read over what he said and we'll talk a little bit about it. So uh, this comes from PlayStation Universe. It was done separately in an interview with uh, Ruli Webb. And I don't know if that's exactly how you pronounce that, but sales success has become a severe issue in recent years due to the rising cost of development. To be honest, I often hear advice from people around me that it would be better to make games that have higher profit margins. But what our industry needs than anything is variety, isn't it? Console titles that is single player games with an ending have a very important value in themselves, a market where such games continue to be made and coexist with other genres and platforms is healthier. That's why Shift Up will continue to take on the challenge of console games in the future. We have a strong desire to continue to create games that allow many players to enjoy to the end and return to reality feeling good. And you know, it does continue to be kind of ironic that these guys made like mobile games, kind of like gotcha games in the past, right? So it's like you do that, now you're doing this. And I, I don't think they're um, trying to like milk it. I don't think they're trying to like shill like for these different kind of uh, people, I guess, online, right? that are into different things. I think this is his genuine thought. And, you know, again, he's talked about this a little bit in the past, right? He talked about, there was an interview where it asked him, like, does the game have an ending? And he said, like, yes, the game has an ending. And it's such a stupid question, you know? And it may be a silly answer, but in reality, you look at all these games that don't actually have endings, right? Even games that are single player or they are games that maybe they could be live service or whatever, right? But they have a single-player component. In fact, I would think Suicide Squad is a really good recent example. You would think that game should have an ending. And, I mean, it kind of does, but it also doesn't. It doesn't officially end. It relies on the live service to finish it off. So, while it might be a dumb question, and I think it is a dumb question for, like, it's a single-player, story-driven game, it should have you know, like games like Stellar Blade have an ending, right? Find me one that doesn't, and it's probably not going to be looked at in the greatest way, right? So, you know, it is silly bringing it up, but ultimately, I guess it's the industry that we're now in. And honestly, I think he does a good job of trying to, um, like, appeal to different kinds of people, not making himself like an enemy, right? Because, and I do agree with him, he talks about coexisting, and I think that's important. I think that is what we should strive to do in the gaming. And now, obviously, I have no say in that, right? But what I like to see of games is all different genres and all different kinds. Like, hey, you give me a Helldivers type thing every now and then. I'm going to like it. I'm going to appreciate it. I'm going to play it, all that stuff. You give me RPGs. We've had like 30 of them so far this year, right? Some JRPGs, some action games. Like, I'm, you know, I've long said I'm very much into all of these different genres. So, yeah, I, I think they all should coexist. I think the issue that, you know, he kind of has pointed out and others have pointed out, I mean, over the last, let's say, what, five to seven years, maybe five, six, seven, eight years, there's been the trend of the live service. The thing with the gaming industry, it's a little tough because it's like a follow the leader type thing, right? Will there always be the games in the different genres? Yes. But like the bigger, the AAA companies, I think they're more followers than they are leaders. They see a trend. It's not necessarily the developers, right? It's more of the publishers. They see the trend and they have their studios chase that trend, right? And then somebody else kind of goes off the deep end or does something a little bit different and suddenly that's the new trend. You have to follow that trend. So it, it's tough to say absolutely that like you, because you actually cannot say it's only been say live service right but there's been this push in the last you know five to eight years 
and now everybody's just a follower in that group. And again, like, are there other games outside of it? Yes. Are there other games even in the AAA space? Yes. But the AAA space tends to go after like one or two, maybe probably just one where they're very single minded, kind of like one trend at a time. Loot boxes, you know, microtransactions. Back in the day in the early 2010s, it was having multiplayer in your single player game. So like Assassin's Creed or Batman Arkham Origins or Dead Space, right? Like they just follow trends. So, you know, it's good to hear him. Again, does it does it give Stellar Blade bonus points? No. No, honestly, the game has to be good. You can say all the greatest things possible and your game can still suck. You know what I mean? So it doesn't necessarily help the game. It, it makes me believe that he knows what he's talking about or, at least, you know, I kind of relate to it. It makes me almost trust him a little bit. I mean, he's the director, right? So that probably does help Stellar Blade and all. So I don't know. I mean, they're saying all the right things. They've always said the right things. I would say with Eve as a character model, and the way they've done this game and just, I don't know, their philosophies. They've talked quite a bit about it in the last like half year. And it's just, it's always been, I would say, pretty darn good. Like, yeah, it's it's what I want to hear, I guess, right? But I feel like this guy knows what's going on. And he knows you can't, you know, you can't just have, say, one genre at a time. That's the whole point, right? Like, there has to be this coexistence, you know, out there. But there is a place for games that don't make as much money. And I, I guess that's where he's going at, too, right? He talks about the profit margins, that's a trickier one because, you know, you have the Spider-Mans of the world that seemingly are getting in trouble, right? Because they cost so much and, yeah, they make a lot of money, but because of the Marvel contract and because of just how much it costs to make them, they do not – they could make so much more if you eliminated a couple other things, right? So that profit margin is very important to the publisher. So you can't not care at all about it. I think you can have games squeak through – that don't have the biggest profit margin, right? Maybe they cost a lot and then they sell a lot, but there's still not a lot. Or they cost almost nothing and they kind of make almost nothing, right? That's still a small profit margin as well. Those games are important. And and that, I would say, is more of that creativity thing that I always talk about on this channel, right? This fear of publishers to take risks. You need games that don't make maybe the most amount of money on the first attempt because it's you have to start somewhere and you have to have a building block that maybe the sequel does a whole lot better, right? And the way the gaming industry is going is you can't have one mistake. You, you can't have one mess up because if you have one mess up, you're screwed and you're not going to be allowed to try it a second time. So now he doesn't say all that stuff, but we've seen the profit margin kind of talk in the gaming industry. So I don't know. I like what he's saying. I can't wait for Stellar Blade. Felt this would make a pretty solid video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.